to chit or not to chit? That is the question, or today's question anyway. And it's quite possibly one of the most controversial subjects out there in terms of gardening, allotmenteering, growing vegetables, growing potatoes, whatever you want to call it. Some people really get quite passionate about it, and I'm not here to be controversial about it. I'm just here to give you my two pennies on the subject, but I'll come to that and I'll come to the varieties of potatoes I'm growing this year, where I got them from and what we're gonna do. But anyway, to start this off, what is chitting? Seed potato companies, seed companies, whoever's gonna sell you your seed potatoes, or whether you store your own, over winter, over autumn, they'll have been stored somewhere really cold, really dark, the, the potatoes, they're just gonna go dormant and they're not gonna do anything. And when you want to chit a potato, it's almost like you're getting a little bit of a head start on the growing season. You're almost tricking the potato into thinking spring has come earlier than it has. So for me, what I like to do, I do chit my potatoes. I like to use an egg box, a sort of egg container, where the little eggs go. They're brilliant for putting your little seed potatoes in. I put them in the spare room where it is coolish, warmish, it's not massively hot, it's not massively cold. It's a north facing windowsill. It's not too bright, but there's enough light. And it just tricks those seed potatoes into thinking spring has come and it starts them growing. And it starts them growing really, really slowly. So if you have a look at a seed potato, there's two different ends to it. There's the rose end and there's the pointy end. Now the rose ends are sort of rounded end where it's got the rose on it and the pointy ends, either end that comes to more of a point. And to chit your potatoes, you put them pointy end down into your sort of egg container that I use and the rows end up and the chits start to grow out. One thing I would say about chitting potatoes is that if you are an absolute novice, if somehow you've searched YouTube and come across this video, don't chit your potatoes. You will have a million other things going on at this time of year, we're heading into spring, you're gonna have loads of different plants and seedlings and stuff to worry about. Don't give yourself something extra to do. Just w wait a little bit. Buy your seed potatoes a little bit later in the year. Just dig a hole in the ground and put them in and let them grow. The only thing that's gonna happen is that your potatoes are gonna be ready just a little bit later in the year. Take away that headache. I remember my first year, I must have had 15 different varieties of potatoes. Like, yes, let's go loads of potatoes. I didn't need that many varieties and it just causes problems. Give yourself a break, take it easy, don't chit. But for those of you who are perhaps just a little bit more seasoned, those of you who know what you're doing, or like me, you think you know what you're doing, chitting seed potatoes can give you a little bit of a head start. It gives you that boost, it gives you that advantage to get stuff out earlier in the season and get things growing. The other thing you can do, like me this year, I'm gonna grow my pit potatoes in buckets. So I'm not gonna do them in the ground, I'm gonna use the bucket method. You can do this if you're doing them in the ground as well, but on your seed potato, depending on the seed potato, it'll have lots of little chits all over it. You know, sometimes you might have about half a dozen on there. Now, the amount of chits that come off your seed potato will generally-ish, rule of thumb, not exact science, kind of dictate how many and how big the potatoes will be if you have lots of chits, especially in the bucket method, where, where space is restricted. If you have lots of chits coming off, you're generally gonna get more potatoes, but smaller potatoes. So perfect for your sort of first earlies, your new potatoes, your second earlies even, absolutely marvelous. But for me, two of the, the, the main croppers I'm gonna do this year are King Edwards and Maris Piper. Now I want nice big potatoes, you know, jacket potato sized potatoes. If I have loads of chits coming off that seed potato, Chances of me getting nice big jacket potato sized potatoes, not great. So what you can do is you can use a coin, you can use a potato peeler, a knife or whatever, and it's just take some of those chits out. So you only leave your seed potato with what? Two, maybe three, depending on how much space, depends how much space you've given the potatoes to grow in. If they've got lots of space, maybe just leave three. If they're a little bit sort of more confined like me in the buckets, I'd perhaps just leave two on the potatoes there. Now I mentioned just before that I am really fortunate that I've got just the right environment to chip my potatoes in. That spare room at the front of the house there where 
you know, it's north facing, so it gets just enough light. The heating's not on in the room, but it gets ambient temperature from around about the house. So it's about 10 to 12 degrees just in there. And it's just perfect for getting those beautiful looking little stubby sort of greeny brown coloured chits on the seed potatoes there. However, you'll find that if you put your seed potatoes in an environment that's not quite right, if it's too warm, if there's loads of direct sunlight coming on those seed potatoes, you'll get these big, long, white, squiggly chits. I'm sure you've seen them all before. If you've had potatoes left in the cupboard or something too long, these big, white, squiggly, long things that come off the potatoes. And that's an etiolated chit when it's come out all big, big and long and white like that. And that's no good to anybody. All that's done is that sapped all of the energy out of the potato. And if you see with a seed potato, your seed potato becomes all soft and wrinkly. All that energy that's been stored up in that seed potato to grow the plant has been sapped out and it's gone. And chances are, you, you can, there's a technique where you can rub them off, where you can take those off and the seed potato might survive and it might still grow, but it's not given it the best start in life, which is, I guess, that's the whole aim of us trying to chip these potatoes. And some people do see chitting potatoes as being a little bit controversial. Some people think it's a complete waste of time. Other people think it's the absolute bee's knees. Some people like me, you don't have a massive opinion. I like to chip my potatoes. It gives me a little bit of a head start on the air. And at this time of year, you know, the middle of February, when gardeners are getting sort of itchy feet or itchy fingers just to get on and start getting things sown. And especially for me up here in Scotland, it's too early. We've got, the, we've got the lovely onions on the go here. We've got some little cauliflowers. That's about it. I don't want to jump the gun and get tomatoes and cucumbers because it's just going to end up in disaster. But chitin potatoes gives me something to do. It gives me something to concentrate on. It makes me feel as though I'm doing something useful and productive in the garden, ready for the season ahead. Now, some people don't like it. If you don't like it, if you don't do it, if you just dig a hole, throw your seed potatoes in there, good on you. If it works for you, brilliant. Likewise, if you chip your potatoes like me, good on you, brilliant, and I hope they grow really well for you. But what I would say is that in making this video, I don't want to be controversial, but if just one person, just one person watches this and maybe has learned something or takes something away from it and they don't chip their potatoes, or they don't do something wrong, and it saves their whole crop of potatoes for the year ahead. And you know what? I'll sleep pretty soundly at night because of that. Chitting potatoes can come with a couple of little risks. And as I mentioned just before, we aren't out of the danger of frost here in Scotland yet. It's the middle of February. The frost zone that I'm in, we're looking probably about the first week in May when we're gonna eventually have that last frost. And that can be a little bit disastrous for your potatoes. So luckily again, for me, when I see the shores starting to come up, they're gonna come inside the greenhouse. They're gonna go inside the polytunnel. Nothing is gonna be outside in the open until that frost date, that last frost date is long gone. If your shores are up and you get a decent frost, it will kill them off. They will be done. Your potatoes will be done for the season. So it does come with a little bit of a risk. So you do have to be careful. And what I was saying before about if you're an absolute beginner again, give yourself a break. Take it easy. You can do it next year. Once you've learned a bit, do it in the future. In fact, you've got the rest of your life ahead of you to chip potatoes. Just don't do it in your first year. So as I've said, I am a potato chitter. I'm a fan of chitting potatoes. But if you do not, Chit your potatoes, if you don't like doing it, the one thing I would just be aware of that if you've got your seed potatoes, if they're stored away somewhere nice and cold and dark, so they're almost sort of dormant, whether they're in a garage or a shed, somewhere like that, a perfect location, the sun is shining beautifully today. I can see on the little temperature gauge, it is 19 degrees in here, 90 degrees centigrade, I should say. And that's beautiful. Obviously the seed potatoes, well the seed potatoes are in here because I'm going to show you them in a moment, but normally they're not in here. But just be aware that if you get a bit of a warm February, it can trick your seed potatoes into thinking spring has come early and it might just trigger them into starting to grow. So I would just say this time of year, maybe it's once a week, go to where your seed potatoes are, have a little peek, have a little look, 
just to make sure they haven't sort of sprung into life. Now onto this year's seed potatoes and I've got my, my little list here that tells me which varieties I've got. Now I get all my seed potatoes from a company called Potato House. If you ask 50 different people where they get their seed potatoes from, they will give you 50 different answers. Likewise, if you ask them what varieties they grow, they will give you 50 different answers. Just go and have a look. The internet is full of seed potatoes. Go and have a look. Think about what varieties you like. You would like to grow, what taste you like, what size potatoes like. Do you like the ones with the red skins? Do you like the ones that grow purple? Do you like waxy ones? Do you like flowery ones? Do you want big ones? Do you want small ones? Do a bit of research. But anyway, the ones I have got from Potato House so far this year to grow. So my first earlies, they're going to be Duke of York. I did want Red Duke of York, but they were all sold out. I've got Charlotte for my second earlies. I've got Heidi Red and King Edwards for my mains. I mentioned before, I'm also going to do Maris Piper, my favourite potato, as the main croppers. But I forgot to put them on my order. So needless to say, I now have to put another order in to get some seed potatoes. And the, the seed potatoes from Potato House, they come in these lovely bags. And let me just pull one of the, the, the bags out here. You can see the, the bags of tubers there. They are absolutely lovely. They are always in really, really good quality. One of the absolute best potato growers on YouTube is a chap called Tony O'Neill from a channel called Simplify Gardening. Now I would absolutely recommend going over to Tony's channel and having a look at some of these videos. I mean, just look at the number of subscribers Tony has and the number of people who've watched his videos to tell you just how good he is at growing potatoes, especially using the bucket method. So please, 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 after this, I will put a link at the end of this video, you'll see it pop up on the screen, right at the end there, to one of Tony's videos about potatoes. Please go and have a look. You will learn loads from Tony's videos. So please let me know in the comments down below if you chit or do not chit. Like I say, I'm not trying to be controversial. I don't want big arguments about the pros and cons of whether you chit, whether you don't chit. Do you chit? Do you not chit? Do you like doing it? Do you not like doing it? Anyway, that's me done for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now, folks.